Would you like to learn how to self-publish a book and become a best-selling author? Well, let's try this out for size. Number one bestseller in five categories. Number two bestseller in one category. Number three bestseller in three categories. Number four bestseller in one category and 8,892 of the bestseller rank in the Kindle store. Now, this is with no big following, no big ad budget, and not very much time. So how did he do it, and can you do it too? You actually can, and I'm gonna tell you how to do that in this video, so make sure that you stay tuned. Hey, I'm Dale, I'm a best-selling author as well as a self-publishing expert teaching you how to publish books that sell. And if you want more of that, make sure that you hit the subscribe button and turn the bell notifications on so you don't miss a single one of these videos. Here's a big shout out to our channel sponsor, Vexels, a leading graphics platform with royalty-free designs, illustrations, and graphics you can use on any kind of publication or marketing asset. With over 100,000 designs and more on the way, Vexels helps content creators by saving time and money with quality designs. Hey, go check them out at dalelinks.com slash Vexels and set up your account today. Tell them Dale sent you. Stick around to the end because I've got two things for you. I'm gonna show you how many sales it takes to get number one bestseller, as well as a checklist that's going to get you on the right path and on a, the proper type of a book launch sequence. Why become a best-selling author anyway? Well, this answer is probably best suited if it came from you. There are some people that want fame and riches and power, and some people just want the bragging rights that they can kind of put best-selling author after the name. You noticed I said that right at the intro was best-selling author, and I think I'm going to help kind of clear the air, get it to where you understand the idea of best-selling author and what it really brings to the table for you. The big issue that authors have is they're typically shooting for bestseller, but they're looking at it like it's Mount Everest. And it really can vary based on where you want to become a bestseller in. So the reality of bestseller lists like Wall Street Journal or New York Times those are pretty high and you're going against all odds. If you're an indie author, and especially a new one, trying to break on those lists, mm, it's, it's gonna require a lot, a lot of work and a lot of purchases and downloads of your ebook or purchases of your print book. But here's a solution for those of you out there that want to get that bestseller tag but can't quite reach the Wall Street Journal bestsellers list or the New York Times bestseller list or any of those other bigger ones. It's Amazon, and Amazon actually has a lower barrier of entry. There's not as much required if you wanna get that bestseller tag. It's first of all just understanding some of the fundamentals of actually getting onto those bestseller lists. Primarily, you're gonna find a lot of people that claim to be best-selling authors is typically in eBooks. Why is that? Well, they're cheap and they're easier to sell, and more people are buying it now more than ever. So it's just gonna be a case of just getting out there and letting people know that your ebook has been published and getting it at a good price point that everybody's more susceptible to purchasing it. The issue that authors have with Amazon bestseller lists are these three things, including they never hit it, because either they're just hoping Amazon is going to sell the copies for them and just make things happen. It doesn't work that way, folks. There are a few unicorns in this business that happen to just catch lightning in a bottle, but for the most part, 99.9% .9 of indie authors out there, if they really want to top the bestseller list on Amazon, they gotta do the work. And the other thing is if somebody actually hits an obscure category, so if you're listed in some random small category that like the number one spot is taken by somebody who has 400,000 in the paid Kindle store, then chances are likely all you need to do is just do a single sale and you're at the top of that list. We're not gonna so much talk about obscure categories because if that's the case, you can probably just skip the rest of the video, but I'm gonna actually show you on getting larger categories that is a little bit more competition and you can kind of get your way over into the top 10 spot, if not into the number one spot. And then there's the other nefarious individuals or some people that are accidentally put into the wrong categories altogether. I've seen some of the nefarious individuals out there that will purposely put their erotica book over into a children's category, which is just beyond me. Someone's falling asleep at the wheel over an Amazon KDP or 
and then, you know, just for the benefit of the doubt, you know, maybe, just maybe they selected a keyword that was loosely associated with a specific category or browse path that Amazon put it in there accidentally. I'm not thinking it's the latter, but it does happen on occasion. The book that I shared with you at the very beginning of this video was actually a short read that was written by my brother Walt Roberts called The Live Streaming Kit. And uh, we went ahead and we whipped this together. We got it fully edited, formatted, and ready to go onto the market. And it actually launched on pre-order on October the 27th of 2019. Our intent was actually to push it the week of Black Friday and actually having it launch on Black Friday. So as soon as it actually go on Black Friday, we would actually put it to full retail value. Now you're gonna get in just a second here why I say full retail value. The reason why I do pre-orders is that way it gives us a little bit of distance between the time it actually launches and the time that we actually put it over into our KDP dashboard. This gives us a little bit of wiggle room to where we can actually create a marketing strategy, that we can create some buzz, that we can actually reach out to people within our community and actually get it to where they're rallying behind this particular book launch. Now the reason that I put it over on Black Friday is because it's a large event in which a lot of people are visiting Amazon to purchase gifts. So we really placed this strategically over into Black Friday to Cyber Monday for good reason because people are more susceptible to buying it. Now I'm not saying that every single one of your ebook or print book launches should be on Black Friday to Cyber Monday, but if you can think about placing it to where it's relevant to your publication or it's going to get a little bit more exposure, I would recommend that you do that. So for instance, there's Amazon Prime Day that's a little bit earlier into the year, I think around like July or something like that. You can always put it around that date or let's say for instance, based on your particular niche, that you just go ahead and place it around a given holiday that it might be related to. So let's say you're putting out a book on St. Patrick's Day, you would launch it right about then and maybe create buzz just before that day. So once Walt's book actually launched, it actually got his first sale and it was actually 255,986 in the Amazon bestseller rank. Now you're probably going, okay, wow, that is, that is really high. So just to kind of clarify, if you're, you're kind of new to all this, number one is great. Okay, having number one spot is fantastic, but that requires roughly about six to 7,000 downloads or purchases within a given day in order to actually hit that number one spot. And even then, it's not even guaranteed because it varies from one day to the next based on what the other books are doing inside the actual Kindle store or in the print book store. Now, just a couple of days ago, being on Monday, November 25th, we went ahead and did the launch strategy that I'm going to explain here in just a second. And as soon as actually we went through the launch strategy, it actually hit 8,892 in the Amazon bestseller rank. Now, this is pretty exceptional. That's in the top 10,000 eBooks in the entire platform. But then it dipped down just about yesterday, which was Tuesday, November 26th, and actually hit a rank of 13,695 in the ABSR. And then you go fast forward to today, it dipped just a little bit more at 28,241 ABSR. Now the nice thing is that you heard me rattle off some of the stats at the very first portion of this video. So just to kind of repeat what I was talking about, it was number one bestseller in five categories. It was number two bestseller in one category, number three bestseller in three categories, number four bestseller in one category. And I also didn't mention the fact that actually it ended up becoming a number one bestseller over in Canada in a given category and placing actually in the top 2000 in the ABSR. So what's the magic sauce? I mean, how did it become a bestseller? Was it thousands upon thousands of downloads? You're gonna be pretty surprised by the actual facts here. So the very first thing you need to do is when you publish your book through your KDP dashboard, you'll wanna make sure that you're selecting the two browse paths that they allowed you inside there. And uh, I see some people that will skip over it or they just get glossed over. They're like, I'm not really sure. It's gonna take some time. If you're brand new to this business, it might actually take you anywhere from about a half hour to hour to actually kind of go through each one of the browse paths, choose them wisely. 
So from there, when you select your category or what it's called is BizSack, you're going to actually give Amazon a signal that, okay, this is where my book goes. And then they start to categorize it based on those two categories that you selected, as well as any keywords that are with inside your metadata. And they'll automatically categorize it. Now, don't just leave it at that. You can actually have up to 10 categories, or they call them browse paths, per publication. You're just gonna need to put in a request through the KDP dashboard. Now, how do you find those particular browse paths? Now, for me, I just simplify things. I go ahead and I use what's called Publisher Rocket. You can actually get your hands on it. I got a link inside the description down below. But what I do is, I use a specific search term that is relevant to my title. Now, you're gonna probably use like just one root keyword, maybe two tops. And what it's going to do is it's gonna pull up a number of categories based on that particular term, and you're gonna organize from worst to best. Now, when I say organize worst to best, that means you're gonna take like the highest ranks, being like if it's 1 million or 400,000, you're gonna have that at the top and you're gonna go ahead and put it down to the bottom. Now, I'm not looking for categories that are have a number one slot at 400,000 because that just means that this category, yeah, you can go ahead and place number one bestseller super easy, just make one sale and you're at the top. But we want to go into categories that are proven that people are actually purchasing books from and of course that you're relevant to. So choose the categories that are most relevant and make the most sense to your publication. If you find that you're at a crossroads and you're like, ah, oh, Dale, I can only get about eight all together, you know, is this a bad thing? No, it's not a bad thing. And having more categories doesn't necessarily mean you're gonna get more book sales. It just gets it to where you're categorized and you're put in front of other publications that are relevant to yours, especially through things like customers also viewed or also bots. I've talked about that in previous broadcasts. And so, like I said before, what you're gonna do is you're gonna copy the browse paths or the categories, and you're gonna go over to your KDP dashboard, scroll down to the bottom, click contact us, you're gonna do your book details, and you're just gonna request, hey, could you add these categories to this ASIN, of course, the ASIN of whatever your given book is. Now, this is why I created distance in the pre-order. So it gave me enough time to go through, research some of the categories, and actually get it to where I would request that and have it available. I see a lot of people that are just launching their books right out willy-nilly, no categories are ready, and they're just hoping for the best. It's better that you get a jump on it now, so that way you don't have to worry about it later. So this is why pre-orders really work in your favor. Okay, so now comes the fun part. There are three things you're gonna want to do before promoting your book, because yeah, you're gonna wanna promote. Set up an Amazon Author Central account. You're gonna wanna make sure you have an actual author profile. If you've got your book on pre-order or any other type of books, you're gonna go ahead and put it over into your Amazon Author profile and get it to where it fills that out. And you're gonna track your ranking there. Now the reason is, you don't need to be camping out on your product page. And um, there's a little bit of a theory behind this that if you're going onto your page and you're continually refreshing and refreshing and refreshing, that what ends up happening is it starts to drop a bit of the relevance because if you're just giving impressions to the algorithm and no sales, it's gonna say, ah, this is probably not as relevant as we thought it was. So again, this is a theory. So rather than playing around with that theory, I would recommend don't visit your product page too often, just go over to your Amazon Author Central page. You can look in your book sales rank. I actually will share a screenshot right here and it shows you how I'm actually able to track the rank of my given book. Number two, you're gonna make sure that you get Amazon bestseller list site links. So you wanna use this so you can track individual performance for your book in a given bestseller list. And this is again to where it kind of mitigates the number of times that you're visiting your specific page because all you have to do is just open up those specific site links. Oh, there it is. Oh, I'm number four. Oh, I'm number five. So you can actually keep those open. It makes life a little bit easier. I bookmark them sometimes you know, whenever I'm doing a book launch. That way, if I want to do a screen capture and have it for bragging rights and share it on social media, I can do that. And then get a clean site link for sharing to people. Now I've shared all about clean links. I've actually got another video where I kind of cover it, but I'm gonna go ahead and show you, if you look here, at the very top of the screenshot here, all you want is the amazon.com all the way to the end of your ASIN. Everything else thereafter is all jibber jab. We don't want that. Just share the specific one. If you have an Amazon Associates account, you can obviously just get a short link and you can share that via Facebook, Twitter, or wherever else you wish. 
Okay, so now we're ready to start running ads. Now I started running ads about day one. Um, yeah, you know, it's it was probably a little bit of a loss leader, but my whole purpose was to find out and identify high performing keywords that were converting really well. So that way when I went to, for full launch and went full retail, um, I could start profiting. Now, I briefly teased on the fact I was like full retail, as soon as it goes to launches. Now this is where I say phone a friend. Now this is a one time use card only, all right? You heard me, as soon as you do this, that's it. You don't want to do it again because one of the worst things is if you become a prolific author and on your 20th book, you're blowing up people's messenger feed or emails or texts and you're saying, oh, buy my book, buy my book, buy my book. Do it once. Be very thoughtful about it. Now, there are some exceptions to this rule, but at any rate, here's how we're going to go ahead and lay it out. We want to make sure that we are strategic about everything that we do. So um, you'll notice that I started to really push and promote on Monday the 25th and it's going to launch on Friday the 29th. So as I was getting ready to reach out and phone a friend, what I did was I created a list well in advance and I just sat down for probably about 15 to 20 minutes and I wrote down a number of names that of people that would be interested in reading this, that they would really enjoy it. Uh, influencers that I knew, I also reached out to them that it might be of interest to them. Um, I don't always recommend doing f family and friends, but if you're a new author, sometimes, you know, push comes to shove, you can do that. The problem is, is it does kind of muddy up your also bots, but that's another conversation for another day. Now, the next thing is, is if you're going to be doing this and reaching out to everybody, you can't be going full retail price. So if you're launching your book, say, for instance, at $9.99, uh, you may not want to go at that high. Go as low as you're comfortable in dropping it to. So since this was a short read, my brother and I agreed that 99 cents was more than acceptable. Now that put us at a lower bracket of 35% commission, but uh, we were willing to take a little bit of that loss because we know our ultimate goal is not going to be in selling books. It's going to, of course, be building awareness of his author brand. So once it fully launches, it will be at $2.99. And I don't imagine we're gonna go any higher than that. So uh, in any event, 99 cents for that time from when we had hit the launch for the pre-order. And then as soon as it goes onto the market, we're gonna go ahead, kick it back up to 2.99, which will put us into the 70% royalty range. That's not it. Okay, so now we're ready to reach out to our friends and family. We wanna make sure that we create some simple copy. And what I mean copy, that means is it's just a way to get it to where it's compelling and they got something to gain, also don't feel like they're obligated. Because again, we don't wanna come off as that slimy MLM used car salesman. We wanna make sure that people don't know that, you know, hey, look, it'd be awesome if you support me, but in the same instance. So my particular copy was like this. My brother Walt is releasing his first book on Black Friday that could really use some love and attention. If it wouldn't be a bother, could you order a copy on presale at 99 cents till Friday and share it on social media? It'd mean the world to me. You're under no obligation, but I appreciate any support you could kick our way. Thanks so much. So I'm going to reach out gradually to everybody on my list. We don't want to just start to shotgun everything out there and fire hose everybody. We want to make sure it's gradual because one of the things the Amazon algorithm really loves is consistency. You're going to find out why here in just a second. You reach out to your friends, family, acquaintances, network professionals, groups, followers, and last but not least, your email list. Now, if you've got followers in an email list, copy is what I just shared may not be appropriate because it kind of feels weird. There's no direct relation, so you need to kind of get it framed in a way that makes sense to them. So how many sales and how much profit did we make on this particular run over the course of three days? You're probably gonna be pretty surprised and you'll hopefully feel a little bit more motivated to actually use something like this if you're trying to become an Amazon best-selling author. Within 12 hours, we had hit 8,000 in the paid Kindle store in the US and we also hit 2,719 in the Kindle store for Canada. Now this is the part that's going to blow you away. The total sales on November the 25th included 25 sales in the US, four sales in Canada, and one sale in the UK. Unfortunately, I didn't think about it till well after the fact, I actually checked to see any kind of ranking over in the UK. I'm sure it was marginal at best. 
But you can kind of see though, based on the rank that I shared with you for Canada for sales, put me over to just north of 2000 ABSR. So the total profit from that one day push, drum roll please, $10.50. All right, yeah, um, we probably shouldn't quit our day job. Although if we're going to our day job, we can always just tell people, hey, I'm an Amazon best-selling author. Oh, you're not? Well, let me go ahead and show you how you can do this. And in this instance, since he hit two regions in US and Canada, my brother probably can go to his daytime job and say, I'm an international best-selling author. Should you quit your day job? Absolutely not. You can see based on the numbers that I just shared with you that it's not going to pay the bills, but it's definitely gonna give you that little bit of that title that you can put at the end of your name. Will this help get more exposure? This really depends because you can hit the top of the bestseller lists, but it doesn't necessarily mean that more people are going to buy it. It's gonna give you a little bit of exposure and hopefully get it to where more readers can find you on Amazon and builds relevancy around your categories and the keywords that you have selected in your metadata. But it's up to you to actually get out there and start to do marketing and promotion and continue to push it out. So for instance, I'm already booking my brother over into some interviews on a few different YouTube channels and podcasts. And that's gonna be the thing is, in order for him to continue to actually get this rank up and moving, he's going to have to keep going and keep getting out there and telling people about his book. The same thing is gonna go for you. If you want to maintain being a best-selling author, you're going to have to continually promote and tell people about it until you're sick of saying it and then say it more. Look, this is a lot of information. In fact, actually, I put together a small checklist and it actually is a little bit more on the granular level that you can actually understand even more best practices beyond what I shared in this video. It's actually the bestseller book launch checklist. You can get your hands on it at dalelinks.com slash checklist. Also, in this next video, I talk a lot about KDP and publishing on that platform. Is it really all that in a bag of chips? Is it really worth it these days? Well, you're gonna find out here in the very next video, so go ahead and I'll see you there.